What's going on guys, it's Toby here, and today I'm gonna to be teaching you guys how to rev match downshift in your manual car. So let's go ahead and hop inside the car, and this is ridiculous man but i mean it's super simple and we're gonna break it down in this full step guide and your guys are gonna learn how to drive your manual car even better than you did before because most people actually slip the clutch and they don't rev match downshift so let's get straight into it all righty one last thing before we start with the guide i just wanted to show the new exhaust on camera and basically walk around the car because we get this really cool view with this fish eye so we have those anderson composite gt 350r fenders we also have the gt 500 hood coming from anderson composite Closets, and I think I'm gonna do a carbon hood. I'm not sure yet. I mean a carbon bumper That's what I meant to say. Obviously, we're gonna start with uh, getting the car on so this is the South Florida weather I mean this thing sucks this weather sucks, but it is what it is and Just one more thing I wanted to say before we get into the guide I highly advise against you guys learning how to rev match in rain or like adverse weather conditions like this because if you let the clutch out too fast, you don't give it enough revs when you're rev matching and you're going a decent speed, say you're going off of like a highway on-ramp, you can get yourself into a really bad situation and chirp the tires. So we're gonna jump in with explaining the basics of rev matching. So what exactly is it? Well, you're matching the transmission speed and the engine speed with your road speed. So say you're in third gear and you wanna go down to second gear, you need to give your car a little blip of the throttle in order to match your speeds with your road speed. So in a manual car, you quite obviously have three pedals. This is your gas, this is your brake, and this is your clutch. When you're rev matching, and this is just gonna be some sort of graphical illustration, I mean, it's not gonna be exact, but what you're gonna do is you're gonna put in the clutch before you go down to your lower desired gear. You're going to lift the throttle, which I'm not gonna do right now, and you're going to dump and release the clutch. Before we go anywhere, I'm obviously gonna get my seatbelt on safety first, and I'm gonna switch the mode to the rain mode because we're not playing around out here with a Whipple supercharger in the rain. We don't need that crazy throttle response like I usually would have. Oh, I also need to get this, and then I guess do it on the other side as well. So let me go grab that. Step is for all the people that are gonna be like, oh, you have auto rev match in this car, which I do. I actually got it back with my Lund tune. So let's go ahead and take that off. We go to driver assist, and we're going to take off the auto rev match. Where is it? Yeah, so we're gonna turn off rev match right now. It is now off. Just got rolling here right out of my apartment complex, but the very first thing that I'm gonna teach you all to do is to look at the RPM that you're in at a certain speed. So we're in first gear right now. We're going 12, no, let's get to 12 miles an hour so we can make an exact point. We're going 1700 RPMs at 12 miles an hour. Now I'm gonna shift to second gear, right? So we're in second now, and now I need to catch you in the next bit to explain the point of me showing you that. The same process, but in second gear now. So I'm cruising at 23 miles an hour I have 2200 rpms now the reason why I'm telling you guys this is because you need to remember which speed you're at and which rpm you're at in each respective gear so now I'm gonna go to third gear right and say that I'm gonna drop the speed down to 23 miles an hour I need to give the car a blip of the throttle to about 2200 rpms to rev match correctly so we're gonna do that real quick let's slow back down right this is rev matching and I'm going 23 miles an hour, I'm in third gear, I wanna to go to second, we're going to clutch in, blip the throttle, oh my God. Blip the throttle, that was an over rev, I need more practice, I obviously haven't done this since I had the auto rev match, but you guys get the idea. What I was trying to do was put the clutch in, blip the throttle to 2300 RPMs, and then go back to second gear, because that's how many RPMs I had when I was going 23 miles an hour in second gear. All right, again, we're in third gear, so we need around 2200 RPMs. So there you go, that's how you rev match. I did it smoothly that time, it's super easy. I'm telling you guys, it just takes practice, you need to do it over and over again. We'll show it again once I turn out of here so I'm not disrupting traffic and all that. So we're gonna go to third gear again, right? We're in third. It's raining cats and dogs out here in Gainesville. Now I wanna go back down to second gear and I'm going around 30 miles an hour. I'm gonna just go ahead and guesstimate that I'm gonna need about 2600 RPMs to smoothly go back into second gear. So I'm going to clutch in like this 
flip the throttle and put it back in second. Now I needed more gas in that case because the car lurched forward. So I was a little bit off with the RPM and this is exactly why I'm advising you not to learn this in the rain because it could be super sketchy if you dump the clutch too fast with not enough gas. Vibes were off when I tried to go into second from third at 30 miles an hour. Let's go ahead and go to 30 miles an hour in second gear and see how many RPMs I actually need. So I'm gonna need around 3000 RPMs to smoothly go back down into second gear from third gear. So you guys get the idea. It's all about matching your transmission speed, your engine speed and the road speed into the desired gear that you wanna go into. So we're gonna give it another shot once we get over this hill and we're gonna go back down into second gear. So let me just get over real quick and I'm going about 40 miles an hour. So if I wanted to go into second gear right now, I would probably have to give the car about 4,000 RPMs or a little bit more in the throttle blip, but we'll see, we'll do it right now. So I'm gonna go back down into second gear at 40 miles an hour. That was perfect right there. So we needed around 3,300 RPMs. So you guys are getting the point by now, obviously. You just need to match the speed that you're going into fourth gear or a higher gear and you want to go down to third so same idea applies we're going to give it a little throttle blip and that was super smooth you just slide it in in that case i was in a higher gear with a lower speed so i was going around 35 miles an hour in fourth gear and i wanted to go to third now i'm not going to have to give it an aggressive throttle blip like going into second because obviously the gear for third is longer and you can reach a way higher speed so in that case you just i gave it like a 1500 rpm throttle blip and it slid right into gear super super simple guys for understanding what I'm talking about, well, what I'm gonna do is just zoom into the RPMs and show what I'm talking about. So I'm in second going 30 miles an hour. I go to third gear. I wanna go back to second gear. I know that I need around 3000 RPMs. So you're just riding out every gear until you learn your car and learn at which speed you're going in each gear at which RPM you're at. So like, it's just practice. You just practice over and over again. Now, what about fifth gear? What if you're in fifth gear and you wanna go down to fourth? Same principle applies and we'll show that in just a second. So we need to get some more speed here and we need to shift into fifth gear. So we're in fifth right now. My RPMs are really low. So I think I'm gonna need about 500 more RPMs to go into fourth smoothly. Let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna clutch in, throttle flip, and slide it right back down into fourth gear. Now in that case, I had way too many RPMs. Well, actually not way too many, but a little bit too much. And the car jerked forward because I over revved. So let's go back down to third gear. So I'm gonna just guesstimate, I'm going 40 miles an hour. I'm gonna need about 2,600 RPMs or a little bit more, maybe about 3,000 to go into third smoothly. So let's give it a shot. Yeah, so it was around 3,000 RPM. So what I'm doing is clutching in, flipping the throttle, pushing the shifter into the lower gear, and it's super simple. I don't know how else to explain it. Like, that's how it is. I'm showing the foot movement too. So clutch in, flip the throttle, push it in, let go of the clutch. Full racing on iTijuana. Well, obviously with the more speed you have and the higher RPMs that you are within a gear, you're going to need a lot of revs. And this is where it gets tricky. So that's where it's hard. I can't show that right now because it's raining, but essentially what you're gonna need to do is really give it a lot of RPMs on those throttle blips. So say we're in fourth gear and we wanna do a little roll race. Actually, that doesn't even make any sense. Say we're in fourth gear going 80 miles an hour, right? Somebody pulls beside you on the interstate in Tijuana, Mexico, and you wanna go back down to 30 miles an hour to do a roll or whatever. Let's just say that this is the scenario, even though it's highly unrealistic and those speeds are a little bit off. And right there, I under revved. But anyways, what I'm saying is that you're going to give it a lot more RPM. So say you're gonna give it like 5,000 RPM throttle blip. Like that's just how it is. You need to give it higher RPM throttle blips for the faster you're going. If you're just like regularly cruising, then it's gonna be around 2,000 to 3,000, maybe even 4,000, depending upon which gear you're going into. But higher speeds is going to be harder to do and it's gonna require a lot more practice. One more very simple rev match, and then we're gonna go into going down multiple gears at one time extremely fast, which is basically the same concept, but you can skip through gears if you give it enough revs. Honestly, I don't recommend doing that, but we'll get into that in just a second let's go back down to third gear we're in fourth right now we're gonna give it around 2200 rpm let's try it out 
So yep, I smoothly went back into third gear. Now if you get a little jolt, that's completely normal because you're slowing down the car. Even with the auto rev match, I actually feel the car jolt. So that's just how it is in a manual car. It will jolt a little bit. Now if you get excessive movement where the car's like boom, boom, and the revs are all over the place, that's because you're either over revving or under revving, which is over revving is giving way too much gas for the desired gear you're trying to go into, and under revving is not giving enough gas or RPMs to get into that gear. So the car will actually jerk and buck like crazy. So this is what I'm talking about. We're gonna go fourth to third to second. So we're gonna try and do this quite quickly. Oh, I under revved right there in that case. And now we're gonna go back down to second. So I'm gonna need like, that many RPM, it was like 3,300. But if I didn't mess up that first gear shift, that would have been completely perfect. The funny is that when I had to do this myself and I didn't have the auto rev match because I recently switched tunes from Palm Beach Dino to Lund, I was perfect at it, like I wouldn't mess up. And I think it's been about a month on this new tune from Lund Racing and I have the auto rev match back in the car. For some reason I lost it with Palm Beach Dino, whatever, but I was perfect at, at rev matching. And now that I have the auto rev match, I haven't done it in a month or so, so I'm really rusty. But you guys are getting the general idea of what I'm talking about. I'm trying to explain it in the best of terms possible. Take a brief little intermission or pause because I need to get some caffeine and I'm gonna get some snacks from the vitamin shop. So I'm gonna get some like protein bars and that type of stuff. And then I'll catch you guys back for the later parts of this video. There's really not that much else to explain. We're just gonna like solidify the concepts and go over it once again. So this is probably gonna be like a shorter video as compared to what I usually post. I just got all my stuff and honestly, I can't say that I couldn't be more pleased with how this car is coming together. So the build is like pretty much almost done. We just got to get it on E85. I have the fuel system in the back of my car and we need to do a built trans, but like the Camaro is coming on the 31st. So we're super close to being closing out with this build and then starting something crazy and new. The goal is to get Sally to run tens like 10 1, 10 2, so I'm gonna have to do a bunch of practice. Oh yeah, I also need built axles, so we're not really done. We have like 10 more thousand dollars to go into this build, to finish it off, really. For the second portion of the video, I think I'm gonna turn on the auto rev match so you guys understand a little bit better and see how the computer is doing it because it's more exact and I can do more explaining without having to focus. But anyways, right here we have some Sally merch. So this is like one of the crew neck sweatshirts that I sell. So Sally is obviously on the front and then we have her on the back. So let's get moving on the car all of my merch is sold on my site so it's sallymerch.com if you guys were wondering but let's go ahead and get moving and turn back on the rev match so we can do some further explaining and we'll see where we'll go from there fyi and just for anybody wondering so the way that the computer auto rev matches is basically there is a sensor in the gate right before you hit the gear and it'll flip the throttle like i'm doing with my foot but instead of me doing it with my foot obviously the computer is doing it so I mean, it just does the same thing. So when you hit a lower gear, it'll just pop in and you can dump the clutch out. One last little thing before we get moving. So I wanted to show the difference in the exhaust note with the valves open and closed. So right now they're closed, I'm pretty sure. So let's go ahead and open them up. Just listen to the tone. It's quite subtle, but you'll hear it. Hear the difference? So you can barely hear it, but that's honestly so sick. Make sure to check out Valvetronic Exhaust because they hooked me up with this awesome exhaust and it's gonna turn gold. So I'll put a picture of what it's gonna look like after driving a month on it. It actually turns from stainless steel, like completely polished look to gold. So that's gonna be awesome. We gotta put the car back up on the lift a month after the install. Because with the active exhaust, this car sounds bone stock. So this is what the bone stock active exhaust sounds like. It's very deep and grumbly. And then the boiler was just super, super loud. Like people were complaining all the time, but here's the computer auto rev matching. So we'll go back to fourth, then I'll go back down to third. So it's doing the same thing that I was doing before, except that it's blipping the throttle and I don't actually have to do that. All I do is just dump the clutch and it does it for me. So, I mean, it's pretty simple. Over time and with practice, you'll actually get like my friend Jake. So we'll show a clip of him doing it himself. He has a GT350R with a Pro Charger making 900 wheel horsepower. And like, he has no auto rev match on that car. He's just really good at it. Bro, Jesus Christ. Oh my God. 
emphasize this enough so just ride out your gears in each gear so i'm in third gear right now i'm riding it out to know how many rpm i need to go back down if i'm going a certain speed and it's just all about riding out your gears and knowing what speed you're at for the desired gear you want to go into so it's like memorizing what you want to be at so auto rev match is on obviously we're going to go back down to third gear just one more time because i don't see how else i could explain this but i remember i was going about 48 miles an hour and i was cruising at 3000 rpm now the computer is going to do it itself but i'm just going to show the process so there you go you see it just blipped it up to 3000 rpms and i was correct that's how much i had before now i accidentally blipped the throttle a little bit myself too but it wasn't enough to make a difference we're gonna be like i've never auto rev matched a day in my life and i've had a manual like since forever well guess what they slip the clutch so what they're doing is going into a lower gear and they're letting go of the clutch very slowly now i'm telling you guys right now if you have a car that's making power and you're doing that while you're like roll racing in mexico you're gonna cook that clutch in no time like you should not be slipping the clutch like that unless you're launching the car and even that is extremely abusive to the clutch but if you repetitively downshift and just let the clutch out slowly you're gonna cook it and basically decrease the lifespan because the way a clutch works is it's two meshing plates together so it's i mean that's with a twin disc clutch in this car usually you can have a single disc you can have a triple disc but in this car we have a twin disc clutch now every time you open and close the clutch which is basically putting your foot down and then when you put it down you're disengaging it and when you let it back up you're engaging it so when you push your foot all the way down on the clutch you're actually releasing the two clutch pates from each other now when you release the clutch again they go back down if you're doing it very slowly they're rubbing together at very high rpm and it's just cooking up the surface of the clutch here's a pov of what my feet are doing while i rev match it's a little bit sketchy but oh that was way under revved yeah <laughs> i cannot do that at the same time but that's giving you the general idea over rev jesus christ man i need practice so that's gonna do it for this video i tried my best at explaining it i really don't see anything else or how else i could explain it so if you guys enjoyed this and i hope you learned something pretty much remember to comment like and subscribe and i'll see you in the next one Shoo!